Thank you all for joining us uh, this evening and this morning. For those of you who are joining us from overseas, um, uh, please mark your calendar that uh, every first Wednesday of the month, we will be interceding for the people of Africa. Uh, we will be praying that God will spark revival in the continent of Africa. And this, uh, that is what we are called to do as a church, to step in the gap and uh, to pray for one another. And the revival has taken place. Many revivals have occurred or had occurred as a result of intercessory prayer. And uh, we want to take that uh, uh, opportunity to step in the gap and pray that God will revive Africa, that God will send great awakening across the continent of Africa. And we have, uh, we'll be hearing voices uh, people will be joining hands, uh, will be hearing uh, people pray in uh, just a few languages. We'll be hearing uh, Arabic, uh, people pray in, Ara in uh, Arabic language, um, Spanish. We have a brother from Morocco who will be praying and a brother from Argentina who will uh, also be praying in Spanish. And thank God that he hears all languages. We are all joining hands together to pray. Africa has suffered so long. We are joining hands to pray that God will spark revival in the continent of Africa. We, we are beginning to see some light come, come to that continent. And so, Let's begin with a, a prayer, and I will call on my brother, uh, Richard uh, Hayes, to lead us in opening prayer. Needed. Father God, we come to your throne as your children, humbly to ask that you be with us tonight, to guide us through your Holy Spirit, to give us the inspiration to inspire others and to get GEM Africa active and aimed at the core. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, when I think of uh, revivals that uh, <laughs> took place in the past, uh, South Korea comes to mind. South Korea does come to mind. South Korea, one of the poorest nations, uh, is only 50 years plus that great revival swept through South Korea and they turned the, the nation upside down for the Lord. And the blessing, blessings have been overflowing in that nation. And they, again, it's just not too long ago, as a result of intense prayers by the saints. Now, South Korea is the second leading missionary organization, or missionary enterprise in the world. And so let's look to Africa, that God will do great things. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, say, call upon me, I will answer you and show you a great and mighty things which you don't know. Call upon me is an invitation. God wants to hear from us. God wants us to participate in this endeavor uh, in the early church. The early church was threatened. They were asked to shut down their missionary enterprise. John and Peter in Acts chapter 4, 
we are asked to shut their enterprise and never to speak in the name of Christ. In Acts chapter 4, verse 20, this was their response. For we cannot stop speaking what we have seen and heard. Verse 21, and when they had, when they had threatened the, the, them further, they let them go. They threatened them not to speak in the name of Christ. Verse 23, when they left, they joined the brethren. In verse 23, and when they had been released, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord in prayer. In prayer. When they heard the threat, they lifted their voices to God in prayer. They knew the importance of prayer. They knew the power of prayer. They knew the power of prevailing prayer. They knew that the only way they could move forward is through the answer by heaven. And so they prayed in verse, in verse 29, and this part of the content of their prayer. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that thy born servants may speak thy word with all confidence. Verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. That was the first movement of the missionary enterprise as a result of prayer. And so we are going to pray every month, once every month, and in your own private prayer, put Africa on your prayer list. We will continue to pray until we see that fire of revival spark through the continent of Africa. I have uh, given a prayer topics to individuals that will be praying, but I will, will be praying alongside with them as they lead us in prayer. And uh, I will call them in the, in, group, in the group of three so that uh, there will be no confusion about who is praying. As you hear your name, the first person, the second person, the third person, let's pray accordingly. When the first person is finished praying, then the second person prays and the third person prays. And uh, I have a uh, brother Perry will begin uh, this cry. Let's ask God for open hearts to the gospel. Uh, and uh, my brother David will pray that God will send prepared missionaries. Uh, everybody can go as a missionary. And that has been the problem of especially Africa, they have received many missionaries unprepared, ill-prepared. And as a result, they dumped false teaching, falsehood into the continent. So we pray that God will pre send prepared missionaries and sound Bible teachers. And Brother Say, say we pray that church leaders will abandon falsehood that church leaders will abandon falsehood. Now, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we can never thank you enough for your faithfulness and for your love. Father, in the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of prayers that we petitioned you for, I know this one you're going to answer because your truth and being a part of your family 
is what you want most of all. We know that by faith alone in Christ alone, our leaders, as well as those that are laymen and parishioners and those that are part of the church, Father, there's one church and you're growing it. But Father, I just pray tonight that you would open the hearts of all leaders, of all missionaries, all unbelievers, Father, who have not put their faith and trust in you, that they would open their hearts tonight. You know where they are. You know where they're located. And I want to thank you in advance for them hearing the truth. We know already, based upon what the scriptures have told us and based upon the results that we've already seen, that you are clearly answering our prayers. We can never thank you enough that when we pray, we don't get a busy signal. We don't get a voicemail. You're always ready to hear from us. But when it comes to the gospel, we know you enjoy that the most because it is your will that all would come to the knowledge of who you are. But we know in today's time, Father, we know that there are false teachers. We know that for whatever reason, which we know is your plan, that there are people who are fighting against it. We know that there are those who have been blinded from the gospel. But Father, we know that by this prayer alone, and as what Reverend Moses said, that their eyes would be open. And that it just wouldn't stop there. Similar to our brother Ezra, who studied your word, and who practiced it, and who taught it. May every leader who knows your word step forward without fear to share the gospel with every person they can. Father, I thank you for the truth that you've given us, that we know that the people that in Nehemiah's day, they each one of them had an area of the wall to work on. You've given us each an area of the wall to work on through prayer tonight. And I thank you. I thank you that we can be part of your plan, that you call us co-workers with you. What a privilege it is that we can call upon you, knowing that we're gonna you're going to match up those who are searching for truth. You know every one of them. And you know every person who's going to believe already. So I just pray that their hearts would be open to the truth and that you would set a fire on them, that they would be so excited knowing that you've, one, answered their prayers, two, you've shown them just how gracious and loving you are. And I can never thank you enough for all that you do. I thank you for Bethlehem Missionary Church that has been called specifically as a missionary church, not just for those in the building but also those that are outside who watch each and every week, week in, week out, setting aside their sleep, fasting from television and what the world has to offer. And Father, I want to pray also for every individual that joins us tonight that is taking on this command to go and make disciples of all nations. Continue to strengthen them. Continue to guide them. We know you're going to provide for their needs. But Father, I just pray now that you would hear all the petitions that are coming towards you and that you would answer them in the time that you've set out. Thank you so much. And I love you. And I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we come before you this evening with Thanksgiving, Father. Thanksgiving for the opportunity that you give us. The opportunity to come before you on a weekly basis, on Wednesdays. To hear your word, to learn your word, Father. To give you praise, to give you glory. And Father, the, the privilege that we enjoy as we gather with brothers and sisters across the world does not go unnoticed, Father. 
we thank you for the unique perspective that we, especially those of us here in America or in Tennessee, wherever, we have the opportunity, Father, to, through the experience of our pastor and our many brothers and sisters who actually live in the continent of Africa, in various countries, Father, of making it real. We know, Father, that each and every one of us, every person on the planet, you love equally, Father. And everyone has the same opportunity. We know that. And we thank you for that. But we're especially conscious, Father, of our brothers and sisters through the recent trip that Reverend Moses and members of our church made to Zimbabwe, on to Nigeria. Just two of the 50 plus countries in that continent, Father, a diverse continent, Father, but each and every person is our brother and sister. And Father, we come before you tonight in prayer, petitioning you, Father, for the needs of that country, Father. So many millions of people Many who live in countries that are governed by hostile governments, they are hostile to the gospel message, by other belief systems. So we come before you tonight just praying that you would pour prepared missionaries into that continent. Reverend Moses mentioned South Korea. We understand that they send more missionaries to us than we send to them. Father, we desire no, no glory for ourselves, but only for your glory, that you would supply in your own way. Missionaries prepare with the truth of your word, Father. Amen. And with that, with that, I want to call to mind and especially pray for GMI, the Global Missions Institute. Amen. Father, we thank you for the progress made thus far, and we pray that we would continue to see that develop into tangible, to fruition, Father, and use it as a mighty force, Father, to present the truth to those that you motivate, those who want to take your truth to all corners of this, this planet, Father. But tonight, we especially come before you speaking of Africa. And we thank you for the the many uh, individuals who are on the ground there that are associated with River Moses through GM. But Father, we know that there are also many other, many other missionaries who go, different backgrounds. And what we pray for is that they are prepared, prepared with the truth. We pray that the falsehoods would be wiped away that the eyes would be open for those with an earshot of that truth of your word. We pray that the individuals who have the opportunity would not only affect those individuals that are within their earshot, but that could be multiplied, that the ripple effect would continue and continue and continue. Father, we don't know what your plan is, but we know that whatever it is, it is perfect. And the Reverend Moses has challenged us to pray on a monthly basis until we see that tangibly. We know that there's evidence of it from the last trip that was taken to Nigeria. We know that that spark is there. And Father, I challenge each and every one of us, as Reverend Moses did, that in our daily prayers, in the privacy of our rooms, wherever we pray, wherever we come before you, giving you praise, giving you thanksgiving, petitioning you, Father, that we would call to mind the needs of that continent, the needs of those individuals hungry for your truth, Father, and that you would provide. And by the teaching of the Holy Spirit, there would be a, 
tremendous revival in that continent. Amen. Father, we come before you asking these things by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Savior, we are all the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we are grateful to you because you have always had us in mind as a people. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the privilege we have to fellowship with you to talk with you, to pray to you. We are grateful, Lord, that we could access the throne of grace and table our petition. We are glad, Lord. Thank you. We thank you because whenever we call upon you, you will hear and answer our prayer. Mm -hmm. We are grateful, Father. Thank you for this solemn heart that you place it in the heart of your servant, the Moses, to gather all of us across the nations of the earth to pray for the continent of Africa. We are very happy, Father, because we know that you have begun something unique in Africa already. We know you have begun to cause a steering in the continent of Africa already. We know your plan and your purpose mm -hmm. must definitely come to pass in Africa. We know you are set to do something unique. And this is why you began this revival with GM. Our Father, we're grateful to you. We're grateful to you. We're grateful to you. Thank you for opening the heart of men already. Thank you. Thank you for touching men already. Thank you for this spark of the revival that has begun. We're grateful, Father. Dear Father, we gather to pray to you this hour to request that by your mercy, Father, you will touch the heart of the gospel leaders across Africa, the men and women, the boys and girls, those men that you have committed the gospel into their hands, the men and women who ought to stand as truth bearers, the men and women who ought to stand as agents of transformations, the men and women that you are, you are depending upon to, to, to spread the true gospel, that uh, instead of carrying the true gospel as spreading falsehood and spreading lies, Father, we pray that you will touch their heart. You will touch the heart of Christian leaders, gospel leaders across Africa, that they may abandon falsehood mm. and break the truth of the gospel. Father, we look up to you that Africa be saturated with the truth of your world that Africa be saturated with the truth of the gospel, that every truth, every, every gospel preacher, gospel leader, Christian leader, we be engrossed with your truth. We be engrossed with the genuine gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that the fire of revival that began, we caught across this continent called Africa, that your purpose and your counsel will be established, Father. This is our prayer. Father, this is our desire that force would be abandoned, that force would be abandoned, that prosperity gospel be buried, that prosperity gospel, that lies be buried, that fake gospel, another 
gospel be abandoned. Father, please touch the heart of Christian leaders that they may begin to embrace the truth, begin to embrace the only gospel, begin to embrace the daily gospel, and that the Lord Jesus be preached in truth and in spirit. This is our prayer, Father. This is our desire. And we look up to you, Father, that beginning from this night, oh, our Father, let the transformation begin by your mercy. Let the change begin by your mercy. Our Father, we desire that as we gather again next month, there will be greater testimony of transformation who begin to hear across the nations, our Father, what you are doing already to the glory of your name. Let the of the gospel of Jesus rise higher and higher and higher. Let this truth, Father, saturate and engross every heart of the leaders. Let leaders genuinely abandon falsehood and fake and embrace the truth. This we ask, dear Lord, in the name of the most precious the glorious Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah. Amen. Gloria, Señor. Amen. Gloria te en esta tarde, Señor, venimos delante de tu presencia, estamos unidos en este lugar, Señor, con un mismo corazón, Espíritu Santo de Dios, toca en esta noche, Señor, cada vida, Rey de Gloria, toca, Señor, los corazones, toca la familia, Espíritu Santo de Dios, en esta hora, te clamamos por África, Señor, que tú estés obrando en las vidas, Espíritu Santo de Dios, clamamos tu intervención, Señor, clamamos tu mover en las vidas, tu mover en los corazones, tu mover en los gobiernos. Te adoramos, Señor, en esta noche, te exaltamos, Señor, te bendecimos, te clamamos, Señor, por África, Espíritu Santo de Dios, por las familias, por las vidas, por tu iglesia, Señor, por cada pastor, Señor, cada persona que está en esta tarde sufriendo, Señor, que están en situaciones difíciles, en guerra, en hambre, Señor, sin esperanza, sin salvación. En esta hora te clamamos, Señor, por las vidas, te clamamos por los corazones, Señor, clamamos, Espíritu Santo de Dios, en esta tarde, toca la iglesia, Señor, toca tu iglesia, levanta tu iglesia, Señor, que el mensaje de esperanza, de vida, que el mensaje de salvación corra, Señor, en las vidas, en esta tarde, Señor, Espíritu Santo de Dios, toca, Señor, las vidas, toca los corazones, Señor, el Rey, Espíritu Santo de Dios, transforma en el nombre de Jesús, declaramos toda cadena que se cae en el nombre de Jesús, todo espíritu contrario se va en el nombre de Jesús, todo espíritu contrario, todo espíritu de maldad, de mentira, de engaño, ahora en el nombre de Jesús declaramos vida, vida Señor en tu palabra, vida Señor por el poder de tu palabra, en esta hora Señor, confiamos en ti Señor, sabemos que el futuro Señor de esta nación está en tus manos, rogamos por tu misericordia, por porque siervos se levanten, Señor, Padre Santo, ir y buscar esa mies, Padre Santo, que está sin esperanza. En esta hora, Señor, rogamos rogamos tu mover Señor rogamos tu Padre Santo tu palabra que fluya Señor que no deje de correr tu palabra Rey poderoso en esta hora clamamos a ti Señor clamamos por un mover poderoso por Padre Santo un avivamiento poderoso Señor en medio de la guerra en medio Señor de tanta sin esperanza Señor en esta hora clamamos a ti Señor por tu palabra porque tú eres fiel porque para siempre es tu misericordia Señor porque que tú gobiernas, Padre Santo, Rey bendito, y no hay ninguno que se pierda de tu mano, Señor. Clamamos por cada pastor, cada líder, por tu iglesia, Señor. Rey poderoso, que se levante firme en este tiempo, Señor, sin esperanza. Rogamos, Señor, que tu palabra, Rey poderoso, 
obre en cada vida, Señor. En esta hora, Padre Santo, bendigo, Señor, este grupo de pastores. Bendigo, Padre Santo, la iniciativa de oración. Bendigo, Señor, cada esfuerzo. Bendigo, Padre Santo, cada, todo aquello que se hace por tu obra, Señor. En esta hora te rogamos, te bendecimos, Rey poderoso, te pedimos todas estas cosas en el nombre de Jesús. Amén, Señor. Gracias, Rey. Amén, amén. Uh, I'll call on uh, Brother DK, uh, our brother Sunday DK, to pray for an outbreak of evangelism and the Sister Lonnie to pray for children and the youth in Africa that they will turn to God and uh, Brother Ojo to pray that God will create a great hunger in the hearts of the people of Africa. Let's pray in that order. Father, turn our God, we thank you for the privilege of being ushered into your throne room of mercy. Father, it is your nature to have mercy, and on that we depend. Lord Jesus, you did observe in Matthew chapter 9, 35 to 38, about 2,000 years ago, that the harvest is ripe but the laborers are few, and the situation has not changed even today. It is on this premise that we pray for revival of Christians in Africa, for passion for souls, Amen. men and women who will say, give us Africa or we die. Amen. Lord, we pray that you give us the land of Africa, the people and their hearts. Amen. from Egypt to South Africa, from Liberia to Ethiopia, Amen. from Nigeria to Zimbabwe. Amen. Lord, we ask that you give us Togo, Cameroon, Niger, Chad, Eritrea, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, Zib Zimbabwe, Amen. Zaire, Tanzania, Congo, Angola, Namibia, Equatorial Guinea, Zimbabwe, and Zanzibar, as well as other countries we cannot mention tonight in Africa. Lord, we do not need coups and overthrows of governments in Africa. Rather, we are asking for the overthrow of sin, darkness, unbelief, and evil through your word. We are asking for the enthronement of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men and women, young and old. Father, we are asking that there be a massive evangelization of the continent of Africa, that the country that has been known as dark would become a living country, Amen. become a country to be reckoned with, even in your kingdom. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Lonnie? Yes. Father, we come before your throne and we're praying for the children in Africa. We know that we can reap great harvests as what, such what we've seen in Zimbabwe, where the pastor there took a few children and he took Bible doctrine, accurate teaching, help of GEM, and he turned, I believe, the whole nation around. The positive volition that occurred there and is still occurring there with the wonderful Bible teacher that they do have in their church, the every single student there so eager to learn and studying accurately i know that this can be done in all of africa the hope of africa i believe is in the children and accurate teaching before they're polluted with all of the falsehoods and the false religions the influx of the terrorism the influx of the muslim religion and all of the voodoo and false teaching they can have pure bible doctrine we pray that you take each one of the children 
and that you prepare their hearts and minds so that at the right time, you would present them in the way they most accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray for the workers, the people, the missionaries, the pastors, the Sunday school teachers. I pray that you would prepare them so there would be mature believers that know the Bible, that can go in and communicate to the children at their level. We pray for the Bibles. We pray for the materials needed. We pray for the training aids. We pray for all of the equipment that's needed. And we pray for the open ears. We pray that the children would take the training aids home, anything that they've brought from the Bible classes, they take them home so their families see them and that the gospel would spread that way. We pray for the workers that you keep them well preserved, body and mind, and that you keep their health going so that they can travel and not get weary. And I want to thank you for all of the opportunities that they've given us. We do pray for more open doors so that all of Africa can be open and receiving this gospel for all the children. We pray for all of the schools. We pray for all of the principals. And we pray for all of the churches and Sunday school teachers. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Ojo. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege to be able to gather in our various homes to petition you concerning the continent of Africa. Father, we thank you because you are the one that placed this prayer request in the mind of uh, our Father, Abraham Moses that we should pray for the continent of Africa. Like Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, in the Sermon on the Mount, that those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be satisfied. Father, this hour we lift up the continent of Africa before you. Father, we pray that there should be hunger, not just for your word, but for some truth. And that uh, as the hunger for your word, you will lead missionaries, pastors that are already equipped in your truth to be able to meet this demand. Because when the demand is there and the prepared teachers are not there to deliver, they will give their attention to falsehood. So Father, we pray this hour for strong hunger and thirst for your truth that the continent of Africa may no longer be known as continent of darkness, but instead of continent of light, because the way your people will desire your truth. We pray that uh, every home should have the hunger and thirst to learn your truth. We pray that churches will have the hunger and thirst to seek after the truth of your words. We pray for business places to have the hunger and thirst to seek for the biblical way of doing business. We pray that individuals, irrespective of wherever they may be, their countries, as long as they are in the continent of Africa, the hunger to know you, the hunger to know what is it that you would like them to do, what is it that will hunger you so that they will stay away from it, the hunger to glorify you, will be there in their hearts. Precious Father, we pray concerning Africa because of what we see that is happening in Africa, what we hear that is going on in Africa. And the truth of the matter is that they, they are devoid of the truth. And that is why we are petitioning you this hour, pleading with you, because the revival can only come by you. No man can change anything. That is why we are praying this hour, that in your mercy, in your compassion, you will create the hunger and thirst for your truth in the minds of Africans. That uh, when they wake up in the morning, their heart will be to know you, to seek after you and to glorify you. 
Whatever they do, the focus will be on you. This will ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And I want to call on uh, uh, Brother Obang to pray for the political leaders uh, as we see so many instability in that continent uh, that uh, the fear of God will be implanted in them and uh, call on uh, Sister Paula to pray for provision for God's work in Africa. And uh, uh, my sister Debbie to pray for GM Africa. Uh, also for the upcoming conferences in Algeria and uh, Nigeria. Uh, we pray in that order, uh, Uban and Paula, about Paula and uh, Debbie, please. In Jesus' name, our dear Heavenly Father, we Amen. thank you Amen. for this privilege to fellowship together in prayers. And at this moment, we pray for the Nigerian political space. More than ever before, our politics needs the presence of men and women with the fear of God. Our nation has continued to drift and the caliber of leaders and players in political space continue to be filled with men and women who have, who continue to approach the brink even of lawlessness. So we need you, we need you in our political sphere now more than ever before. So we ask you at first father that you help us raise a fresh crop of people as openings because the old guard, as their era begins to end, there is a trend to raise more and more younger ones like them. We pray that, Lord, you raise men and women of integrity, men and women who respect, who have respect for establishment order to get into the political sphere, whether in the judiciary, the legislative arm of government, and the executive at both the federal and state levels. We're talking about men, professionals, who are believers, professionals who are sound, professionals who have establishment view of life to be chief executive in various government agencies. We have well over 500 agencies of government, all of these crying and begging for men and women to play roles executive roles in driving Nigeria forward. So more than ever before we pray, we pray that as you touch our pastors to turn to truth, that from the teaching of truth, more and more professionals who imbibe Bible doctrine will present themselves to take part in political responsibilities. Because yeah. only through that can truths, norms, and standards trickle through our entire social political fabric. So, yeah. Father, we are asking, Lord, you will, you, you, you will cause a flood of men and women to also take an interest, to take an interest in governance, just like we had in Daniel. Daniel had a career in politics throughout life, and he excelled. He excelled. He was a mature believer all through. Nigeria's political sphere is in dire need of believers to get involved and grow spiritually so that truths will begin to percolate now more than ever before. We are now at a brink. And Father, we cry to you. We are now at a brink where norms, standards are virtually, are virtually disappearing. We need your intervention. We need you to move men and women to come alive and to get involved. Brother, this is our prayer. Because as the word says, without this, we believers will not be able to even have 
the peace and stability to advance spiritually. For those who are there at this moment in time, ask you, Father, to touch their hearts. To touch their hearts. The hearts of the kings are in your hands. You can turn it wheresoever you will. We ask you to touch their hearts. From the executive, the presidency, down to the governors across the 36 states, to the legislators at the national level, at the state level, touch their hearts. Let them make laws that will drive sanity and order in the land. Okay. Let them begin to be retreated from the brink of absolute lawlessness. Okay. Brother, this is our prayer and challenge us as believers to play our part, to not just sit back, to make ourselves available and to shine the light of truth when we get into positions as well, that your name may be glorified. Leave this request up to you, Father, in the precious and priceless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, brother, brother Babs, please pray for provision for his work in Africa. And uh, Amen. 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 Ya Rab, it's Mazda Ismaq Al-Quddus, Ya Ilayhi Salih, Ya Rab, Ansa Al-Mumazad, Ya Rab, Ansa Malik Al-Muluk, Ya Rab, Alal Afriq, Ya Rab, Ansa Malik, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, in Morocco, Egypt, Ya Rab, in South Africa, Ya Rab, Ansa Al-King, Ya Rab, Ansa Al-Mumazad, Ya Ilayhi Salih, Ya Rab, Ansa Ya Rab, in Madakhya Zidamak, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ansa Kuti Sgheer, Ya Rab, Jiti, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, وربي بعثك المصر يا ربي بعثك الإجيبت يا رب أنك تكون محفوظ فيها يا رب يا ربي لأفريقيا ببلاد المنبع يا رب بلاد الخام يا رب يا رب أنا هذا بالبلدان هذا وما يا رب يا بدماغ يا رب يا رب أغفر لنا يا رب إحنا يا رب من الأفريق يا رب أخطأنا يا رب تفوق العقل يا رب يا رب إحنا بعدنا عليك يا رب كثير يا رب يا رب أنت من نوسط الحاجات الخايبة يا رب شمتينا يا رب حملتينا بنيديك يا رب باش نكون صالحين يا إلهي الصالح يا رب شكرا لك يا رب على المحبة نتاعك يا رب يا رب نصلي مع خوتي يا رب الآن يا رب ونأخذ قرار معهم يا رب ونتحد معهم يا رب أنا تكون يا رب خدمة يا رب في وسط دول أفريقيا يا رب وتكون ما بين الإخوة يا رب من غير عنصرية من غير يا رب حتى فكر يا ربي متخلف يا ربي بلي يكون فكرك يا إلهي الصالح وحبك ومحبتك يا رب يا ربي شكرا يا ربي من أجل هذا الميتين يا ربي الموجد يا ربي نعمك يا ربي من مختلف يا رب دولك يا ربي لأنك أنت ملك الملوك يا ربي كسب كل الأراضي يا رب أنت اللي كسب كل الأراضي يا ربي نيديك يا ربي بمحبتك وبروحك يا ربي اللي تطفو يا ربي فوق كل الأرض يا رب يا رب خلي نورك يا إلهي الصالح يا رب على الأفريق وعلى دولها الكل يا رب يا رب خلي نورك يسرق يا إلهي الصالح دمك 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 يا رب دمك يا سوى المسيح دم الحمل المدبوحة الصليب يا رب دم الحمل المدبوحة الصليب يا رب يجي يا رب يغفر لنا يا رب ونهض بنا يا رب ودمك يا رب ودمك يا رب يزيد شفاء لنا يا رب ويوزع لنا كل عناس يا رب على صليبك من الماضي ومن أعمال العرافة والعيافة يا رب اللي قد سير في دول الأفريقية يا رب يا رب يا إله الصالح يا رب أنت الممجد يا إله الصالح يا رب وأنت ملك الملوك أنت كاسب يا رب الحرب يا رب أنت المنتصر يا رب أنت المنتصر يا رب قبل ألفين سنة يا رب منذ الأزل إلى انقضاض الدار أنت المنتصر أنت الحي يا إله الحي يا رب يا إله الحي يا إله الحي يا رب رتب كل الأمور يا رب رتب كل الأوراق يا رب اللي مبطورة يا رب ومبطورة يا رب كل الحروب يا رب تيجي يا رب وأنت توقتها يا رب خلي يا رب تعيش في السلام يا رب يا رب العدو يا رب عارفة الأرض هذه يا رب إيش المص المصدر ديالها يا رب العدو يا رب يعرف يا رب إيش هو المصدر ديالها يا رب حام حاربة بالجهل يا رب حاربة بالحروبات بالمرض بالفيروسات يا رب فأنت يا رب تجي أمين يا رب تجي كامل يا رب تشفع من شعبك يا رئيس الكهنة يا رب يا رئيس الكهنة يا رب يا رئيس السلام يا رب تجي أمام أم الأب يا رب وتشفع لنا يا رب أمام يا ولدنا يا رب وتشفع لنا يا رب محتاج لشفاعتك يا رئيس الكهنة يا رب محتاج لشفاعتك يا إله الصالح يا رب الشعب إفريقيا يا رب الشعب إفريقيا يا رب محتاج لدمك يا رب محتاج لشفاعتك يا إله الصالح يا رب يا رب يا رب يغير فينا يا رب ونهض فينا يا رب 
يا رب ينعد فينا يا رب ينعد كل كل ما وجع لي يرجع للعلم يا رب كل ما وضع في يا رب يرجع للقوة باسمك القدوس يسوع المسيح يا رب يا رب يصلي يا رب يصلى باسمك القدوس يسوع المسيح آمين 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 and uh, sister Paula please please pray for GM headquarters uh, that God will continue to use it to advance his work in the continent of Africa and uh, brother, brother Babs uh, to pray for provision for his work in Africa and uh, sister Debbie to pray for GM Africa and also for the coming conference in Algeria and uh, Nigeria and uh, you close us in prayer. Let's pray in that order, please. Sister yes, Paul. Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to pray to you for um, GM's um, provision in Africa, Lord, and throughout the world, and giving them the, um, the provision to be able to provide the um, publishing of your different books to do for to the, to the people and give everybody what they need according to your will. Amen. Pray for you. I just pray for that provision in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Babs. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you because mission has always been in your very heart. And you have only called us to come and join in this mission field in Africa. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be a part of your work. We know that whatever kind of work you start, you also provide for it ahead of time, before mm -hmm. even we arrive. We thank you so much because we know that all our needs will be met. We know we pray for the pastors on the field, all the evangelists, all the communicators of Bible doctrine that you guide and supply them with every material they need in order to propagate the gospel and move it forward. Thank you, Father, for all you're doing on our behalf. And that we know that at the end of the day, we shall be joyful because we will give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Here, Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being here to pray with so many who are united in one voice from around the world uh, to petition you for the cause of Africa. Thank you for each and every person here that they took their time to come and pray rather than any other thing they could be doing. Uh, as we know, we're all so busy and many are up late and all kinds of sacrifices are being made. And it's a, a privilege and an honor to be uh, joining hands with people such as this. Father, we're coming to you because we see the great task at hand and we see the magnitude of it all. And we know that there, this is nothing that man can do. This is something that only you can do, Lord. I'm so grateful for Africa. When I look in Africa, everybody in Africa believes in God. It may not be the right God, and it may not be God in all the characteristics as we know him. But in the West, we've grown too smart for God. So it's really a beautiful thing to see people who still look up to God as their creator. And we just pray that you would harness that knowledge and love for God to turn hearts to the one true God. We don't have to convince them there is a God. We just need to introduce him to the true God and what God is really alike. And we pray uh, for all the Christians as well, that they would understand the true nature of God. Uh, unfortunately, the prosperity gospel has made God into some sort of cosmic butler just at our beck and call to give us the things we want. And that's the furthest thing from what we are, we are to be the servants. He is not to serve us. We are to serve him. And we just pray for the GEM office 
that it will be a beacon of light in Abuja, reaching out all across uh, all across Nigeria and from Nigeria in the center, reaching out across all of Africa. We pray for every aspect of the office. We pray for more books to print, We pr for funds to be able to do that, to get as many supplies as necessary <laughs> to be able to hand to anybody who would love to have them. We pray for the Bible classes that are going on. We pray for the visitors who are coming. We pray for Pastor Joseph. What a blessing he has been to, he has just devoted himself to this cause, leaving behind his own personal ministry and just donating his time and energy day and night, way beyond. Uh, this is a per per personal issue at this point in time. It's way beyond uh, a job. And we just are so grateful for that and grateful uh, that we have been able to work together to reestablish contact with so many uh, GEM partners that has been visited previously by Moses all across the continent. Moses has been to 100 countries and many, many, many of those 100 are right within the continent of Africa. And we have many people and Joseph has worked hard day and night to re-engage with, was we refine those people to re-engage them. And we just pray that they too, people far and wide can feel a part of GEM Africa. And we pray that the, that you would energize Joseph, um, give him the energy uh, he's got the heart for the work. We just ask you to enable him for all the many, many, many hats he's wearing and all the many things he has to do. Uh, we're grateful for the board and all the other people who are devoting their times and energies. And we just pray that we could strengthen up a nucleus of uh, leaders there. Uh, we have people calling, couldn't Moses come here? Couldn't Moses, they found out about the December. Can't he come visit us? I think we'll have many leaders that we pray for leaders to be strengthened and that could be sent out to these hungry souls to have a conference where they need the grace message uh, in their countries. We just pray for all the people uh, that are, experiencing the grace message we just know uh, that there has been so much of the prosperity gospel and that preaching begins to affect every way that people think and it's so hard to uh, get that falsehood out of the thinking and we just pray for all the people that you will enable them father as they take in new information that it will replace the old, but it will do it at a faster rate than normal so that they can quickly turn to the truth. Because as we're praying tonight for a great revival and for many souls to turn to Christ, there has to be sound believers who can disciple all those people. So we need, uh, we need people to be turning to truth and maturing at a rapid rate. Uh, we pray for the upcoming conference in December. We pray uh, both for Algeria, which will be a first time. We pray for uh, hearts to be open and for uh, this to be a wonderful place to plant the grace doctrine. And we pray for uh, Nigeria in December. We pray that people will begin to plan and save uh, funds for travel and uh, so that many can come and that they will put make it a priority. We just pray as the uh, as the, as parts of the prosperity gospel get wiped out of people's hearts and minds that we'll see that truth is more important than money and that the decisions and things will be made accordingly in that father we just uh pray 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 
that by your grace that we've been able to, that you've established this office and we just pray for everyone associated with it, both far and wide, all across the continent of, of Africa, that you would draw them in and strengthen them and prepare them to be good stewards of the harvest that's ahead. And we ask all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Uh, quickly in the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 62, uh, Isaiah tells us, uh, we are the watchers of the gates and we are the ones who petition heaven day in and day out. In verse 6, the last uh, part of uh, verse 6 of Isaiah 62 says, you, and that's, that's you, that's me, you who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. That is us who remind God to, set, to spark revival in the continent of Africa. Take no rest for yourselves and give him no rest until he answers our prayers. May the Lord be with you until next time. Good night and good morning.